Running shoes versus triathlon shoes. Big thing to keep in mind when you start going through shoes, however, is I didn't slip, you slipped. That was 9.66 kilometers in 45 minutes, 15 seconds. Just under six miles. That is the most I have ran since Austin. Heel was tight at the start, loosened up after about a click. This is progress, big progress. More in Trainiacs. Triathlon shoes versus running shoes. I would have fallen with either. Let's talk about the differences though. I'm gonna get something out of the way really quickly. First off is that it doesn't really matter. You can use shoes that are just straight up meant for training, running, long miles, not going super fast, or you can use really fast road shoes like racing flats for your long running doesn't really make a difference. And truthfully speaking, it's not like there are huge distinctions between this shoe is a triathlon shoe and this shoe is just for runners. No, 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 no. However, there are some shoes that over the years, these in particular, these Zoots that are about five or six years old that were straight up designed for nothing but triathlon in mind. That said, they were a complete failure. I mean, how many people do you know that wear Zoot shoes these days? Not a lot. And then conversely, these are Hoka's. These are built up. These are more traditional running training shoes. How many people do you know that wear Hoka's during triathlons? Lots. And you can totally get away with just wearing one pair of runners for all of your training and all of your racing. As long as it keeps you injury free, feels good, you feel fast, stick with what you know. But if you start getting to the point that you wanna start trying out different runners, you wanna have something that's more for racing, more for track work, more for speed work on the road, and then something that's more built up for your long miles, for your junk miles, for your steady miles, here are the things that you should keep in mind that are the differences between, we'll call it, as opposed to runners versus triathlon shoes, we'll go ahead and call it cushioned shoes versus aggressive shoes. So in general, when you are just going out and training, you want a fair bit of cushion. You want a shoe that's going to absorb a lot of the impact of your body. And sure, over the last bunch of years, there's been a whole lot of hype out there about no, 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 you gotta go barefoot all the time, no matter what. Well, fact of the matter is that when humans evolved and our foot structure evolved, we didn't have concrete out there to deal with. We had dirt, we had grass, we had little bit of rock, but people just wouldn't run on rock. They'd go run on something that was softer. So our feet aren't necessarily built for this artificially hard surface, concrete. And that's what we run on most of the time. So we need some cushion. Second thing about that is that most of the, say, natural runners out there say, oh, everyone, everyone needs to run barefoot and humans have done it for ages. Yeah, well, the humans that have done it for ages also grew up barefoot. Basically, if you are watching this video right now, odds are that you did not grow up running around the neighborhood barefoot creating the neuromuscular connections in your feet, creating the strong arch, creating just overall strong foot health from decades of being barefoot. No, you spent decades wearing these or these in your house and your feet aren't prepared to go and handle a half marathon, a 10K, a full marathon barefoot. If you're just 30 year old Taryn, that's like, ooh, I read Born to Run hey, I'm gonna ditch these and I'm gonna go run around barefoot. You're in for trouble. I experienced that trouble. Okay, I think I'm several minutes into ranting and not giving you a whole lot of tangible info, but in general, training shoes have more cushion. They also might weigh a little bit more. So while a pure racing shoe that is meant for just short bursts, maybe you only break it out during 
a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, maybe a marathon. These might weigh anywhere from five and a half to seven and a half ounces. A training shoe can weigh anywhere from eight ounces to 13 ounces. Training shoe also probably has a fair bit more structure. Maybe you're an overpronator and you need a stability shoe. Maybe you're a supernator. Supernator? 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 Maybe you need more structure when you're doing miles after miles after miles after miles, but in your racing shoe, you can get away with having a heck of a lot less structure because the shoe is only gonna be worn for that race and then ditched. Now, in my experience, if you try to cheat that and you use a very aggressive shoe, a very light shoe meant for racing, like I did with these on cloud flashes, yes, because this was all that I had. Basically all the other shoes I had were toast. They didn't cushion me anymore. And I was like, eh, you know what? Leading into Austin, I'm just gonna do all my miles in this. And I'm also gonna race in this. This is a true road racing shoe that has very little structure, very little cushion, and as you might know, I developed some heel problems. And you're talking to a guy that walks around barefoot, that walks around on my side of my feet. I'm constantly doing little toe curls. I'm very conscious of foot health, but still with that amount of load and this little amount of cushion, there's a good chance you'll develop problems. All right, so what should you be looking for in a trainer? In a trainer, Look for, I would say, the most built up shoe that you can get with the most amount of cushioning that you can get that doesn't yet feel clunky. That's kind of around the Hoka Clifton 3s. I haven't tried the 4s, want to, but the Hoka Clifton's for me. These are about eight to nine ounces, huge built up heel, uh, but this isn't yet their most maximal like trail shoes that are coming in at 10, 11, 12 ounces. As much cushion as you can get while still not changing your running stride, that's what I'd recommend for your day-to-day -day training. I've used this. I've used the Skechers Go Run 5s. I've used the Skechers Go Meb Razors. I'm currently using the On Running Clouds. And what I've found that you'll find is as opposed to a specific shoe, I've found that there are say characteristics of a good shoe for me for training. They tend to be anywhere from about seven to nine ounces. They are neutral, so they don't have a lot of structure in them. They have a heel to toe drop of somewhere around zero to four millimeters. They're quite flexible, but they're also not really aggressive. They've got a fair bit of cushion to absorb all that pounding. And then beyond that, I've used these Skechers, these Ons, I've used the New Balance Zante, I've used Newton Distance Runners, all of those things because they have similar characteristics are good for me with training. When you get into racing, however, I ideally start wanting to go towards basically the most aggressive shoe that I'm adapted to. So anytime in the past that I've had a really aggressive shoe off to the side and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna do all my training in this and then I'm just gonna race in that, hasn't ended well. I've ended up having pain in my feet after that. So what I would recommend is do good chunk of your training in your main trainers, and then maybe once a week, do your speed work in these so that when you get to the race, you're adapted to it. And then what I'm looking for is something that has a fair bit less cushion. It's weighing in the neighborhood of anywhere from six to seven and a half ounces as opposed to that seven and a half to 10. It has a really, really light upper so that it's nice and airy and my feet don't sweat. It's nice and smooth on the inside as opposed to having a fair bit more structure and stitching like that. The tongue is very minimal so that it's not getting in the way, bunching up, potentially creating blisters. Elastic laces on them so that I can slide the shoe on very quickly and transition too. And that lightness will allow you to shave off a little bit of time in your running and allow you to get up and basically force you to get on the front or middle of your foot easier because you'll kind of just want to run upright. Like these feel best when I'm running a four to 415 kind of kilometer. We're talking somewhere around a 630, 645 mile pace. Whereas these are very comfortable at a 430, a seven minute mile. 
Sometimes tri shoes also have a little bit of venting in the bottom so that water can come out of there and it's not just pooling inside the shoe. These are entirely stretchy material all on top, but they were just a horrible failure. This was like running on a slab of cardboard. But you know what, all that said, even when I'm racing and I'm healthy, I will typically just go towards whatever shoe I feel best in when I'm running. Sometimes it's been this, like in Austin. Last year, I was training in this a lot. So even though it's not a pure racing shoe, I raced in that. Around Campeche, I was testing out a ton of Skechers shoes. So I raced in the Go Runs. And as you can see, they've very much got demoted to yard shoes. Big thing to keep in mind when you start going through shoes, however, is as soon as you start feeling any bit of foot pain, I typically feel it in here on the side of the ankle. You gotta ditch those shoes. You gotta get something new because the cushioning has worn out. That cushioning is key. People often say, hey, what shoes do you recommend? Find those characteristics of the shoes that work for you and then just start buying tons of shoes, see what you like. These things are disposable. After two, 300 miles, you need new ones. So try out a lot, see what works for you. Now, back to the future moment, I have to go and do that run that you saw me come in from this morning. So I know how it went. You'll now see how it went. Goes.